Hi, we're back here for the Glass Blown Open, and this is the second half of round one, the back nine. Oh my goodness, it's at the country club, and I can't wait to see what goes on in the action with these ladies for the second half of the round. <laughs> this is national poor stop number two of six. Currently, Kona is sitting in 12th. I'm in a tie for first. Paige Birkus is in a tie for ninth, and Madison is in a tie for 22nd. Rebecca is also tied for the lead with me, so we'll see how things shake up on the back nine here as it gets quite a bit tougher. I'm Zoe Andike, and I'm joined by Paige Pierce here on the commentary. So looking at hole 10, it's 391 feet. Definitely have some uphill elevation at first to a drastic downhill dip before you get to a semi-wooded green. OB lining the whole right side of the fairway and a sidewalk left lining the left side of the fairway. Yeah, and since the hole plays downhill, the OB is really tricky. My thoughts on the tee pad are don't flip it over because it's such an easy thing to do to turn it over there out of bounds. Kind of where Kona's challenging. Luckily, she got that overstable finish, but that is a mistake that's pretty easy to make. So, you and know, then, then you think... You want to throw hyzer, but then the left side. Yeah, the OB. gravity is just, it's pulling your disc to the left-hand side no matter what you're doing. If you're, if you're throwing righty backhand, no matter how you want to finish, that downhill is going to pull you to the left. Mm -hmm. yes. and, yeah, kind of just like that. I, I landed OB down there, but, you know, close to basket height, but you don't want to be getting a bogey on this par three. And there's that bit of uphill to start the hole that I was talking about. I know on my card we saw a little bit of that too. It's challenging when you have a downhill shot with the beginning being uphill. Yeah, but Paige is safe at least. Um, but she still has quite a bit of distance to make up for. Totally doable though with a 391 foot hole. Yes. So here she is hoping to get up and down with her judge. Puts it a little bit wide and oh, luckily it gets a little bit of a hyzer kick off that branch and she's right on the edge. A little bit of an aggressive kind of, this is like a downhill jump putt run for the basket. I think just pulled a little right there by Madison ending in OB. Were you, and you were just outside of circle too there? Yes, I was. Okay. And I was running that just a little bit wide. Kona, that was a that was a beautiful drive getting down there. Great attempt. She'll be in great position for that easy par. Paige can't connect. She'll end up settling for a bogey. Let's see if Madison can hit this to save. Oh, little bit high. And that's an unfortunate couple strokes right there. Kona may have gone just a little bit fast there. And Paige coming in to save the bogey. And, you know, if you're going out of bounds on the drive, you definitely want to be able to get up and down with the bogey. Yeah, definitely, at least on the on the left side. There's, you know, like you saw, it was outside circle two, so you can't really count on saving your par from that left side OB. All right. A couple of tap-ins and moving on to the next hole. This That hole really got us. Three yeah. bogeys and a double bogey. For 11, we're looking at 399 feet, par three. We're going down the hill first and then back up the hill. This one's tricky. It's got a sidewalk running, what looks to be kind of like the middle, but it's the left-hand side of the fairway. It's just really tight to the basket. Um, and then wide right, we also have an out-of-bounds flag line. So yeah, tight the, fairway again. Yeah, and the OB up on the left around the basket is inside the circle. So like Zoe's saying, we have a, a very small green up there. It's going to be forcing us to want to aim wide like Kona did. And she gets pinned high about circle's edge. Yeah, that big, huge tree by the basket, we were calling the happy tree during my round because you knew you were safe if you were near it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just, uh, I pulled it. I pulled it a little bit, and I'm going to be OB on the right side where the green is. And um, I went OB quite a ways back there, so I'm going to have an approach to throw still. Paige kept it lower, however, kind of flipped it over. 
And honestly, she's probably thinking her lucky stars that that was as low as it was because it stayed safe. Stayed in balance. Madison with the hyzer here. She's Great release. I love that shot out of her hand. You know, it, it just flew forward for 90% of the flight with that overstable finish, and she's going to be, you know, looking at one of those jump putts that she likes. Oh, that's a beautiful upshot by Paige there. I think she's underneath it, pretty close to. Looks like you're right there. Madison pulling out the sidearm approach. So smooth. So, so just second nature to her. Yeah, her approach game is really good. I thought she was going to go with the jump putt there, but honestly, both options she has are so reliable and always get her just a little tap in. Paige cleaning up with a bogey there. It's too much red on my scorecard is what I'm thinking at this point. Yeah, I don't think uh, when it comes to scorecards, we're, we're trying to stay away from that crayon color. <laughs> <laughs> And a tap in by Kona there for the par. Which par is a great score then. And we're moving right on to hole 12. 314 foot par 3. This is a new hole as well. Mm -hmm. And boy, it's tricky. If you can kind of see that tree line all the way up on the right hand side, there are not too many gaps to throw like one big huge hyzer. Um, that would be a kind of a tricky or a dicey shot for anyone in our field to do. There is a tree strategically placed outside of circle two on the left, so you you really want to try to weave in the middle of them, or if you have some sort of sweet, crazy flip over, you go around the backside, but you would need to finish right. Yeah. There's OB all along the left-hand side as well. And Kona doesn't quite turn that one enough. She hits the barrier tree, though, so she stays in bounds, but she's going to have a little tricky approach from under that tree. And whether it's the hill the elevation gain or the wind, um, that tree in the middle of the fairway is kind of like magnetic for discs, whether totally the whole is. field is playing. Like trying to stay away from it, but getting right in there. And there's no two meter rule, um, which is kind of important because that tree is so thick, it'll just catch discs. Mm -hmm. And like you said, magnetic feel. I think honestly, like we said in the front nine, you don't want to go OB. The whole name of the country club, stay in bounds. And when you see that OB line on the right side, you just get a little bit timid in your release. Um, the shot calls for an Anheuser with something overstable to kind of weave that gap. But it's it's scary if you put too much turn on it. You might end up OB. And, you know, in golf, anytime you kind of have those feelings, whether it's, whether it's fear, nervous, anxious, it makes it takes a player out of their game and, and almost off their line, I've noticed. And so that's that's the whole name of the game at the country club is being confident and believing in your shot, picking the line, knowing those fairways, you know. Mm -hmm. All those things applying at once. Good luck. And there's a miss by Kona and by Madison. You know, being filmed by Jomez, one of our biggest tournaments of the year. There's got to be some nerves, and you know, I just want to, I just want to speak that because I think that you guys at home might think, you know, do we ever get nor nervous as pros? And and the answer is absolutely yes. It still happens. Absolutely. Hole 13, par three. It's 394 feet. We've got a sidewalk on the right hand side, actually pretty close to the basket. Uh, and then there is also, for much further to the left, an OB line marked by flags. This is more uphill than it looks from the tee pad. And, you know, we've got the tree just out the chute, so playing wide isn't the easiest thing to do. Definitely not. And it's scary, too. You know, you're traveling over OB for quite a majority of the flight if you're trying to get to that basket. So Paige just takes our Ballista Pro, doesn't challenge the OB, and but also doesn't give herself the opportunity to it. Um, but I don't think that's a bad thing. A three on this hole is great. Pars are gold. And nice shot in bounds. Pin high almost looks like there, if not right at. Yeah, pretty close. I didn't get it as wide as I wanted, but, you know, I'm in bounds and I have a putt. So look at Kona on the yeah, tee, crossing her sure. arms, just watching her shot. 
I was noticing that. She's not looking super happy. Might have been a little high release there. And Madison again with a great wide release on a hyzer. I know she's been working on the hyzer angle, and it's looking really good. Solid shot. Inbounds. Giving yourself a chance. Up there a little bit past Kona. Behind the tree. A little tricky, but well-executed upshot there by Bjerkus. Kona with a similar looking shot away from the tree a little more. Just playing it safe. Right next to the pin. And Madison from outside circle two. A great attempt. Also right up there for the easy three Z. <laughs> ah, <laughs> oh, that noise. Banded. Yeah, out of great my hand. I thought it was a, a good bid. Just a tiny bit high, obviously. And it looks like we're going to clean up with a couple of pars here. We'll be headed on to hole 14, which is one of the longer holes on the course. Shout out to Dynamic Disc for providing the sponsorship for this coverage. And we're moving on to hole 14. It's 574 feet. It's a par four. This one's, you know, I mean, tricky again. I, it's like I've said that a couple of times. As you can see, there's a fence running the whole right side of the fairway that would be OB and beyond. Beyond it would be OB. Left side, same thing. We have a sidewalk that actually comes up to a stone wall and then a flagged, more narrowed line coming to the basket for out of bounds. Paige is up first with her wheel sack stamped Ballista Pro. This is a new one that you guys haven't seen yet. And she said that this one is a little bit more overstable. So she gets that little finish over to the left side, but she's still in the short grass. So she's looking to be in a good position. Paige is getting a nice run up here for a powerful shot. I can't say enough about these tee pads too. All of them are extremely long. I think they're 14 or 15 feet long and just beautiful run ups for players of every caliber. No matter how much room you need on the pad, it's all provided here. Kona with that destroyer low and wide. She takes the hyzer gap, which is not the more popular gap, but she makes it look like it should be. Well executed, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Quite far up the fairway. And here's Madison. She's following Kona's line and nails it as well. Beautiful. Hyzering into her fairway. Great shot. Great distance. And honestly, where Madison is, over a little bit more right of us, she has the option to throw left or right of the big, big barrier tree or guardian tree at the end. And as you'll notice, there's much lower hanging branch on the what I call the bigger real estate side. It's kind of challenging a player to go on the right hand or back side. Unless you have an incredible sidearm like Kona does. Oh, yeah. Look at this shot. Again, wow. newly throwing sidearms, puts that destroyer perfectly wide on a great release, just and outside. she's going to be in the circle. Oh, yeah, just in yeah. the circle. And you can see that stone wall there. There's those OB flags. Paige, do you sneak in? Oh, just, just OB. Dang. Another sidearm approach. Powerful. Doesn't quite sell those low hanging branches really caught a lot of discs today. I know that for sure. The whole field that played out here definitely had to make a choice. We're going wide on the back side or wide on the favorable side of that tree. And it's like, you know, you can't get through so easy. Those are iron limbs. Yes, they are. You definitely have to go under them. I think the sidearm is the preferred shot just because you can throw it faster and lower and, and hope on for that skip. Kona doesn't quite connect on that one. Page, Page does, though, right in the center. Coming in for the birdie there. And that is a, you know, it's a totally gettable birdie for everyone in our division. And it's just, it's nice to see well-executed couple of shots like that. Put it together for Paige Bjerkis. Nice birdie. And 
And now, honestly, we got a couple of water water holes coming up, which we haven't really seen any water danger yet. So these next few holes get even more challenging, but now with a new element. And whether you're just joining us or you've been watching all along, um, Out of Bounds is the name of this course's game. And uh, water coming into the mix is just a whole nother thing. Moving on to hole 15, though, we've got a par 3, 347 feet. This is, uh, it's got a little bit of downhill and then uphill to finish, I believe. OB on the right, painted line, and OB on the left with the sidewalk. This one is, I would say, like the sweet spot for the FPO's distance. The top half of the field will be able to reach this one, or at least get inside the circle. And the lower half might be coming up around circle two. So you're going to see the players on the top of the division getting looks at this hole. Giving us all a chance. Oh, we're getting that flight or follow flight. <laughs> With their Ballista Pro out wide. Nice skip and a roll. She is inside the circle. Gotta love that shot and the follow flight. Kona with that strike she loves. A little bit too inside. I think she was trying to go around that tree, but honestly, she kind of fought through it. I mean, yeah, it, it did work out. Uh, a mental note for the player to take for tomorrow. And I like what you said on the last hole about the real estate. I think that this hole, again, that gap Madison just hit and the gap that Paige hit is definitely the side with the bigger real estate. So you, oh, nice. Look we got this. a side-by-side -side follow flight. Wow. So you can see they're hitting the same gap, a little bit different disc flights, but pretty close to the same result. Both such incredible shots. I love shots. that. Yeah. Incredible. Side by side follow flight. Jomez always keeping it fresh with some interesting graphics. And this is my Biofusion Defender. Um, I hit that same gap, but I put a little bit too much heat on it. And I actually challenged the back side OB. I didn't even mention that when I was talking about the hole in the beginning. There is OB on the back side. I think it's just outside of the circle. Kona with that attempt, leaves her for the par. Very good attempt though. I mean, just come, barely came up short on the putt. Yeah, I, my putts are feeling good outside the circle, but you know, I don't want to be putting outside the circle. <laughs> I gotta get myself a little closer, <laughs> just a little bit closer. And Paige, as you see, capitalizing on the birdie there. And Madison as well. Great hole for those two strong FPO players. Both, I mean, they had the follow flight. I was hoping for those birdies. Yeah, it's always good when you throw a good drive to capitalize then on the putt, but sometimes it is still hard to do when you know how good your shot just was and you really have these, like, this motivation and this, you know, self-induced pressure to then close out the hole. First water hole, 16. It's only 262 feet. Only pretty much all over water. As you can see, the drop zone is right there at the end of the peninsula, and um, the land feature following up to the drop zone is actually kind of the bailout or layup zone. Um, what you can't see behind the basket is only about, I'd say, 12 to 15 feet until you hit water deep. So if you're going for it, you're not going to want to brush past it. Yeah, and Paige uh. just comes in a little bit too hot with her judge. It's, I mean, it's a putter. It's 262 feet, incredible shot. She hits pin high, but just gets a little bit of a skid and unfortunately goes OB deep. I like the play that Madison chose with a sidearm. You can tell, though, that she's kind of had dipped her body a little bit and uh, flipped her wrist up for the angle, and the wind caught it. Um, I hope she stays solid with that shot tomorrow. It's a great play. Kona's doing the sidearm layup. And is inbounds, you know, inbounds is good. Yeah, it's a smart play, a play that I intended on doing, but we had absolutely no win. So I I went for it as well with the putter. And which putter is this? This is my classic blend Marshall. You I just uh, sailed deep. it. Yeah, sailed it. And, uh, you know, that's a note for tomorrow, I think, for sure. It's it's just when you can get a three on this hole, you're not really losing strokes. And if you do... Congrats to the player that got a two. Exactly. 
Um, as you guys will notice to the left of the basket or towards the tree, that island is pretty big. So if you're landing all the way at the edge of the island, it's it's not a gimme. This is this is no easy birdie if you're landing the island. So Madison with a jump putt from the drop zone. This is this is pretty much the play. It's a really short approach. So we're all just choosing to throw a strong jump putt. That's a great shot. I love when you line up for that kind of run up basketball jump putt. <laughs> A great putt. We got the par secured there for Kona Panis. Four pars in a row. Madison tapping in her bogey. And Paige is just looking for her wet disc there, bringing her meter in while you tap out. Oh. Not, not bringing her meter in. Putting from her drop zone. Yeah. Awesome shot. <laughs> Excuse me. So Kona takes the lone par there. The rest of us get, you know, that risk reward. Obviously didn't pay off, and we all get the bogeys on that one. 680 feet. It's a par four. It's hole 17. <laughs> have your brains stayed in your head, or have they melted right out? I mean, I'm not asking you. I'm just saying to any player... We're coming down the final two holes here, and 17 is no joke. As you can see, there's OB everywhere. Let's talk about it. It's all the way up the left side of the fairway. It's wide at the beginning on the right side of the fairway, but then there's a green, actually, that you see those cardboard, the cardboard wall. But that's not the out-of-bounds line, which from the teapad, I think most of the players actually thought that. Yeah, it looks that way, and it's slightly deceiving, but that doesn't come into play until our second shot. This, this first shot... We're just trying to avoid the OB on the left, but also not be hindered behind these trees on the right. And Paige throws the hole perfectly. She gets up past the 400-foot marker. So she's going to have about a three 350-foot approach. Which is a shot that um, I certainly would go back and pay to have. Yeah. <laughs> if, yeah. If I could place my disc on the fairway, it would be pretty dang close to where Paige is. Yes. Madison also with a great shot, a little bit more of a turn on it so she's going to be kind of behind those trees but she's in bounds and she has a chance to get up and down and Paige you kept it nice and low I mean that was one of the biggest challenges off the tee box is keeping it underneath those trees and in between the lines yeah those branches definitely come into play Kona unfortunately a little too low but you know she hits the ground and, and it kind of stops right there so still in bounds Wow, hitting the 250-foot marker, low release. I'm not sure it would have gone too much further past, but it's still, Madison's definitely disappointed in that. She's going to have to come up with a longer shot for her third. Paige with a good approach, but she leaves herself a little bit outside of circle. the circle. Um, you know, I think she just wanted a little bit straighter to, for that disc to penetrate forward a little bit longer. Paige is going... All the way over the OB green. Um, is that your a mid stable mid range there? Yes, this is my Lucidex verdict, and I'm just going wide and hard with something over stable, and trying to get myself in in the circle for a putt. Something that you probably can't see as well from well, I don't even think you can see the flags just because of the miniature hill, but there is out of bounds deep behind the the basket it's it's actually a sidewalk and i think it's just outside of circle one's um distance madison with a sidearm approach at 250 feet exactly and you know she's in there for a putt kona with a jumper very close. Ooh. Honestly, I mean that was a that was a very far putt, but she had the great speed, good height, everything just a little bit short. Oh, Payne think, wanted it. Uh, I think she she thought that one was in off out the hands. Just a tiny bit low. Sometimes if even if you're chain height, you know, and you hit that little ring right there, it doesn't want to stick. That was a good attempt by you, Paige Pierce. Just didn't quite stay in it hit the actual the basket's rim but you go ahead and tap out and Madison's coming up to tap her putt out very well 
And Good hit. The park. We are on to hole 18, which is another water hole and another new hole for the country club. I think it's a pretty exciting hole to finish on now, incorporating the bleachers for fans to sit on and whatnot, and lots of OB. Lots of OB, lots of water. Are you going to go around the tree to the left, or are you going to just go directly at the basket on the right-hand side and really more the direct gap to the basket? Um, you know, this is it's a par 3, 413 feet, and there's a lot of risk-reward involved with this tee shot. I mean, I'm loving this hole all day long. I think most all the changes are excellent at the country club. I think this is such a good finishing hole and stay tuned all throughout the week because championship Saturday we are going to see some action happening on this hole. I have to I have to guess. Hey, was that right inside of circle two there or just at the edge of? It was just at the edge and that was her air ballista pro. This one comes out a little bit early, so she's challenging those trees on the left. And unfortunately, when you hit them and drops your disc OB, you know, it leaves quite a long look to get up and down to hopefully save a bogey. Whoa, what a blaster. Staying safe, and it was beautiful. It was Thank you. Shot. Thank you. Yeah, I think, I think this hole plays well for me. I just can throw it hard and wide and, and rely on that overstable defender. As you can see, Kona's going straight over. <clears throat> Looks like it's going to be similar to Paige's, maybe just a little bit shorter, Paige Bjerkis's, and it's a great shot. Now, something about Madison's approach here is you'll notice she's on the tee box side of the water. Many players were confused if they hit the tree why they couldn't quite take it from the land, but you have to be observant in your practice rounds to see those flags that are, I think, three or four feet off the bank. So hitting those branches above is going to keep you on the tee box side. Yeah, which is, is, it's really hard to get up and down from there, um, especially with that slanted green on the right, and you, and, you know, the slant is headed towards the OB water. As you can see, Paige is looking, this, looking at this eyeing it up, and she knows if she hits this putt, it's to be on the lead card and to be on Jomez again tomorrow. So that's where see, all the thought is going. Yeah, into this. you can see her really contemplating. And, you know, she, not today, she says it's day one, round one. It's you a know, good move. I'm going to play it safe. It's a great move. It's early in the game. No need to do anything too risky. And that's why you'll see Madison laying up as well. And, you know, this is a little bit of a death putt if you ask me. I'm impressed. I actually got to watch you run that. You hit a lot of chains. It was an excellent shot for the two. Thank you. I also knew if I hit it, it was wow. for lead card, so I had to try. Kona didn't just try, she hit it. She cashed in on a big three. As you guys might have seen, her upshot was left just a little short. Um, I think it was right at the circle's edge or out. And you got to finish your with your par there. Again, very brave second shot, and I'm proud of you for taking it. Not a lot of players are really going to be running a death putt like that. And Paige cleans up, saves herself some strokes there potentially, and... You know, Madison, same thing. I'm just loving the smart golf plays. Definitely. So after round one, Kona shoots six over. I shoot three over. Paige shoots two over. And Madison shoots 11 over. So this is round one of the GBO brought to you by Jomez, the PDJ, and Dynamic, Dynamic Disc. Discs. Katrina Allen leading with a four under. Jessica Wees at one under. And then Jennifer Allen and Rebecca Cox will be rounding out the lead card tomorrow. So subscribe so you guys can be alerted for round two and come check it out with us. And we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>